How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to do a bit of a retest of the uh, Ford F750 now they've added that new uh, engine, the V10 which yeah, has definitely improved it somewhat so uh, yeah, we'll give it a go, see how it stacks up this time I already still liked it before, I like the way it looks, I like the options on it with the roof racks and uh, all the different combinations of the pickup bed uh, you can have a flatbed thing on the back only for one cargo it's got a crane on it as well which is pretty cool Obviously trailers, it covers the basics, a fuel trailer, two slot cargo, four slot cargo, maintenance and a van body. Uh, yeah, obviously no semi-trailers or anything, but it'd be pretty cool if they did fifth wheel or whatever they call it in this game. There's plenty of trucks that can have that, so I wouldn't really say it's anything I'm in desperate need of. And to be fair, if I was just hauling semi-trailers, it's I wouldn't have this as my first choice for it anyway. Not that it's a uh, bad truck at all. Obviously with that engine, and it's definitely able to reach like just got more ump to it. it this thing like tapped out well surprisingly it carried on better than you would think but it kind of got to the point where it's close to tapping out pretty quickly I still think if I'm honest because this thing's got the custom gearbox in it honestly I'd rather just have like the high range gearbox like uh, yeah this thing certainly feels better since getting this V10 engine in but I still think it feels I don't think like the lack of power is the right word, but yeah, I don't know, maybe it is, to me, I just think it might be the gearbox to where it just doesn't, I don't know, doesn't transfer that power to the uh, to the road in as much of an urgent manner, <laughs> is about the best way I can explain it. I mean, I'm definitely, I do prefer the high ranges without a doubt, but yeah, I would say, if anything, it's probably, it's certainly more on the uh, off-road gearbox end of things. But it's more like a scout gearbox than a truck one. Obviously one nice thing about the Lodestar, which is kind of similar. I do prefer this over the Lodestar, but the fact that the Lodestar has a truck engine and a truck gearbox is one thing that makes it just a lot nicer to drive. It feels, uh, yeah, it just goes pretty quick. It feels, to be honest, more like a scout should. This thing, in many ways, it does feel pretty realistic in this game, which I like about it. But as far as, say, like a, a pickup like this goes versus trucks and stuff, like, yeah, you would expect in real life this to go as fast as, if not faster than most of your average trucks. But yeah, to me, like I say, it's not the engine anymore. I think it's just a gearing issue, but that's just me personally. I'd rather uh, have the high range and all the scouts anyway, to be honest. Especially as, like, when you're going along in the Hummer, again, you'd expect a Hummer in real life to be able to go faster than... Uh, various trucks, but the high, uh, just the high range is the winner really in this game to me. Going over those rocks, you see, just because it's still not rapid, uh, I am only in high range at the minute, so I could be going a little bit faster in auto, but not a whole lot. But yeah, because it isn't going rapid, I mean, it's not smashing itself to bits or anything like that. It's one of these, to be honest, after testing it tonight, where in the more difficult maps, it feels better because it still ticks along at like roughly this speed even when you're in much worse terrain I will say out of anything boggy mud does seem to be a bit of a weakness of it I mean it can get through no like I I can't remember anywhere I've specifically got stuck so far but yeah it's just pretty slow it's not quite got enough weight to it to uh, really like plant it in the ground and let it drag along when it comes to mud like this so it'll still make its way through but you've got to kind of slowly yeah, chew your way through and wade your way through but then going along at like terrain like this quite a lot of trucks had almost stopped dead at this point whereas this thing it just ticks along quite nicely like it is quite nice as a scout if you're in a bit of a mad rush and everything you know the old uh, predator croaking always does when I drive past there um, yeah it's if you want a bit of a mad rush and a mad five minutes then I wouldn't say this is the truck to take I went to go and try and kill a tree yeah <laughs> I hit it I bounced off so I came back with a fuel trailer kind of thought maybe a bit of extra weight attached to me and uh, once I hit the tree I was hoping that I'd kind of transfer through my truck and help matters but it didn't really so see get yourself a loaf we got one tree down <laughs> it's the start that's why you get a loaf and you got another one that time it's definitely not quite weighty enough although the uh, the crane and that it, this as you'll see is kind of a little 
just messing around testing my own uh, weight characteristics and stuff. So like that time I had the crane like over the top of the loaf and it was putting quite a lot of weight at the back of the truck and I was wheeling a bit so I don't know it was like sort of just not keeping it very planted but then I put the crane in front of me and as you can see it's sort of yeah it's spread the weight better there's now more weight on the front like maybe in some ways I've not had enough time yet to where I can say this for definite but having the crane on like is kind of yeah helping with the weight characteristics of it a little bit which is one element in this game out of most things I would say can potentially be the most unrealistic some trucks I believe are weighted pretty realistically how they would sort of feel and react in real life some trucks in this game I suppose the step toe that was very light and some of the scouts as well they just yeah they don't have any like density to them really and I get again that's a way of like um allowing each truck to experience like the terrain at different gradients I suppose it's like a heavy truck is just going to plant itself in like the soft boggy mud and everything and claw its way through whereas lighter stuff yeah it does behave differently it behaves differently on the roads this isn't really affected by it on the roads because it's not really fast enough getting over those barriers though considering that fuel tank is like outside those uh the door like it does catch but it I don't know it's not too bad it's obviously like just a nice smooth tank underneath and because it, the front of that petrol tank is so close to the front wheel it's pretty rare stuff catches in front of the petrol tank so overall and I remember this before it had the engine anyway like I thought that fuel tank could be a, more of a pain in the ass than it has been because there's not one on this like left hand side but yeah all things considered I, I've um, the Vorons to be honest they have quite low fuel tanks and I'd say they seem to I get them caught up more often. And I mean, it got over that snow there, alright. Again, not rapid, but. That's why, unlike the uh, Lake Cobb map, the Amandra map particularly, because that's a pretty brutal, slow paced, punishing map regardless. Like, you don't feel that out of place going very slow. Like, in Amandra, even if I'm in the Dolphin, it's rare I'm going to be up in like 6th, 7th, 8th gear. Uh, chances are I'll be putting it in the high range, so. Yeah, when maximum speed isn't really the main thing. But then tonight when I was driving this thing around on uh, like Black River, I suppose to a degree this, like if I'm flying from the garage to the uh, port on this map, on Northport, yeah, this thing doesn't really tickle my fancy in that sense, which is the same story with the uh, Tatarin. I just, the Tatarin's too slow for general use. For me, personally, it's not like a objective fact. That's just my, uh, yeah, how I sort of, whether I enjoy it or not, but I've been using it on Imandra a bit. And it, uh, yeah, it suits Imandra better because it's you don't need it to be going 50 mile an hour all the time. And all things considered, I got over that rock, I didn't actually roll, I, I looped around for another go because I wasn't really happy with my first approach. <laughs> yeah, absolutely planted into that. It, I, I assume the front bumper dug in a bit. Maybe I should try it some other time. I'll take the front bumper off because it's probably not the uh, most discreet of bumpers. But yeah, basically stuck in it. M the bumper must have got far enough over to hit my tyres because it smashed the suspension. And I kind of had a feeling once that happened, if I go at it again, just go a little bit slower. Don't let the speed build quite as much. Yeah, it bounced its way up. It did a... Uh, I've noticed, and I, I'm not 100% if this is just because of this V10 engine... Maybe it is, because sometimes it does affect the durability, but this engine does feel a little bit delicate. Like, once you actually smash it on something, it does seem to uh, end up in the red fairly easily. But, we got over the wall, so the fact that it's got a wide variety of its own repair kits is pretty cool, so I certainly don't really mind. There's plenty of other trucks I've jumped over there that have absolutely deleted themselves on that wall. And yeah, going through the trees as well, it's certainly got a, a little bit more grunt to it now. I still think, though, with this custom gearbox, you can hear like the lack of revs quite a lot. I sort of feel like this thing should sound like it's revving more, but I don't know, maybe it's just me. But yeah, we got through those trees, and I mean, this is not that narrow. It's also got all the roof racks and that that could catch uh, tree branches, so yeah. The low down power as far as pushing through them was uh, not too bad. And even climbing up here, that's where you sort of, even before, 
you kind of think, oh, it's about ready to tap out, but then it just keeps going and, yeah, never quite gets there, even though in some places it is pretty slow. Obviously, by the time I get to the top, yeah, it's going to beach, but I'm not too fuzzy. You know, practically everything, other than probably the Tatran, maybe one or two others uh, wouldn't beach there. As for the cargo test, though, it uh, pulls it around pretty nicely. Pretty tight turning circle as well on it. Not insane, not like the Zix level of a tight turning circle, but it didn't quite touch those snow banks outside the garage, so it, it turns better than... Uh, yeah, like the ANK, the White Western Star, the Cat 745C, I think. A good chunk of the uh, trucks all seem to have like a similar turning circle. And again, I really do like the steering on this. Luckily, it's not ruined it or anything when they've added this engine. And it's, uh, yeah, I, as I've said before, I'd pay, well, I've said 50 grand as a number, but if I, uh, 100 grand if I could put this steering on other trucks. I would pay quite a lot of money. I mean, the more the price went up, the less trucks I'd equip it to, but I'd certainly, on a, yeah, on some of the trucks I use more often, if I could have this steering on them, I would. And as I've said, it shows that the developers know how to make good, responsive, nice-feeling steering in this game. And I get to a degree why they've balanced on some trucks. That's all part of the uh, game, that's fair enough. But yeah, if I had the choice... I certainly would uh, stick the steering on just about everything. And going across here, yeah, I was probably pushing it a little bit doing a four slot trailer, really. I still think this ramped flatbed is a bit of an anchor when it comes to uh, going in this sort of mud. Like when I was trying to tow it forward, then you could see from when I was letting off the accelerator and it was like dropping the trailer hitch bit a bit that it's like, it was trying to pull the trailer, it wasn't the uh, F750 that was getting bogged down, it was the trailer so maybe I could have done a two slot one but either way, I've done most of going over there with a four slot or five slot so uh, I certainly wouldn't recommend it really for any large scale towing really, it's just quite good as an exploration scout, like it does tick along because it has got nice steering, you can weave through trees and stuff pretty nicely in all the little gaps. And yeah, even when you get to like some rough off-road bit, it uh, yeah it still keeps going, even if only just. It's places like this though where I think it'd be nice if it had a little bit more weight to it, so it could like grip into that snow better. Because out of anything, that's one of the more unrealistic feelings of this truck like in real life I think if this truck was driving through that exact same situation it wouldn't suddenly go to like a two mile an hour crawl now, even a while back when I was playing this game I even like would just put on YouTube like four before trucks driving around in the snow and was watching all like Dodge Rams and all sorts of stuff just to watch like how they behave on the snow because I was kind of yeah convinced myself that I don't think trucks in real life just suddenly slow down to two mile an hour because they're on the snow. And they don't. <laughs> That's what I found out. Got my little bobble head dog thing. I've seen as well, there is some other uh, things to unlock, but I think I have to do those trials, and a few people have been mentioning those trials, so I'll have to uh, try them pretty soon. There's people have been saying it's in the new games section or something, I don't know. That worries me a bit. I'd be pretty uh, disappointed if I deleted my whole save. Which I know, I doubt it will. Like, people have been saying, yeah, it's all good, but <laughs> that's what was making me hesitate for a bit at first. I was just trying some new things out before I go for it, but yeah, there's a, what is there, a loaf, a loaf trial and something else, so I'll have to give them a go. Need to save up some money on this game. Although I was looking through some of those Michigan uh, missions, contracts that it's added, and some are, like, they're pretty massive. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, they got quite a lot of different stages and things to deliver on the mission, which is pretty cool. But yeah, some of them are paying, like, over 30 grand out, which is nice. It's more like it should be, because, yeah, when you're doing some missions and you end up getting three grand, it's like, really? <laughs> I'm going to have to go and do five of these just to go and buy, like, I don't know. A GMC, probably more than five, like I think, yeah. 
that's what 2025 20, grand or whatever just to buy the most basic truck at least now even though it might take you a good couple of hours to get the mission done at least you're going to actually see some decent money at the end of it I'm surprised they didn't put another free vehicle on in Mandra. you know just something like I don't know a bit like they did on uh, Rift where they just gave us another free TUZ420 which I've kept both of them but to a lot of people that was just another 140 grand lump of dough which is <laughs> it's like a few maps worth of missions in some cases But yeah, driving along the rock bridge, I mean, because the steering is very nice on this, it, yeah, it went pretty well. I, I, I like driving this thing around. Even going through here, I mean, I'm in high. When it catches the slow, uh, like the shallower bits of snow, it does take off a little bit, relatively speaking. But yeah, I still think, just to, like, don't have to go mad on it, but it'd be nice if it was, a, like, 20% less affected by the deep snow. Right now as well, partly to do with lack of weight, it tends to be. I'm basically caught on a bush. I mean, like I said, story of my life. Um, yeah, that's what's slowing me down now. It's not really the deep snow, as soon as that bush pops out. That one that just popped out. Even though it was a little one. <laughs> they sneak up on you, them little bastards. They're worse than trees sometimes. And yeah, places like this, I think it's pretty much the same as it uh, did before. At places like this, it's not really high-end power or anything that's going to necessarily get you through it. I suppose there is some situations where it helps, but yeah. It's basically the same situation. Dragging through, by the time it goes deep enough, it's now catching the front bumper, all like the underneath of the truck, the fuel tank, etc. And it's, it's pretty much stopped. I basically started winching over to the trees at the side. Once I got near the edge again, though, it was uh, driving along pretty nicely, considering like there's a lot of trucks that are still struggling pretty bad by now. See so a few moments where you think, "Oh, I don't know," but give it a few seconds, and it does uh, usually find its grip again, and it carries on. I do like the roll cage thing you can sort of add around this as well. It'd be pretty cool if there was a few more trucks that you were able to do that. Although, as I've said, the uh, yeah the engine seems a little bit weak and temperamental. Overall speaking, obviously, if you're driving along and doing whatever, it's not a problem. But, yeah, I've smashed into a few things tonight where you can only, yeah, one decent hit, even considering this thing isn't the fastest truck on the game. It can uh, take a good old whack to the engine. Yeah, <laughs> not like that. There's only two. Can live with that. But again, because it's got its own uh, onboard repairs with it, I believe when you've got all these different things on, I think there's 500 repair points in total with all these. And then obviously you've got some fuel and some spare tyres. And yeah, I wish more trucks had, like, again, with the load start, it'd be pretty cool if that had, like, similar setups like this. Even, say, with the loaf, I mean, the loaf's got a roof rack, but it's a van, so they could store stuff in the back of the van that'd be pretty cool as another, some type of, uh, repair add-on thing, it'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Almost went, it glitched there, but you saw the main bit of it where I managed to, uh, throw out a panic winch at the last second and yeah kind of saved me I mean this thing is pretty decent for landing back on its wheels but it's one of them in this game where it's a bit like a roulette wheel there's no I always go back to that hill to try and do a relative rolling test but yeah it's never gonna be a hundred percent accurate even when you just repeat and go down the same roads in this game it's it could be pretty close it's certainly better than just a doing completely different tasks among each truck but yeah you can definitely go down the same place twice like doing a lot of the contracts obviously it's the exact uh, sorry not the contract the contest the exact same mission and you can get some pretty varied times on it even though you essentially attempted the same thing so it definitely seems if you land like diagonally maybe it's having the roof racks on once I'm leaning far enough over it might have just helped tip it over the last bit away 
So I'd send in the VAR. I, I would have brought the tuner, but I don't even know where it is at the minute. It'll be on one of my maps. So I brought the VAR and AE, and of course brought a goddamn horse with a vehicle. Like the Grand National, he knows how to jump them walls. So he has a little roll just for fun, but tell him to get back on the mission, he's back. That's the nice thing about its lightness. Just give it a little clip with the uh, VAR and AE and it's already rolling back to its wheels. And this has the option of the autonomous winch as well. I'm 99% sure it does. I've got the advanced on at the minute, but I always do. Because I've usually got some loaf or something in the area, it's uh, pretty rare that I take an autonomous winch. I've got uh, autonomous winches on a few of the loaf. Well, so a few of the loafs. Like, I can't remember how many loafs I've got now. 13 or 14, I think, at the minute. But there's still more to be had. We've got plenty more stable room for them little beasts. Yeah, I mean, ticking along up here, as long as you don't take the piss and turn too far sideways, practically every truck I've had on this game rolls at this point now, so there's nothing against this thing, but... I'd say tonight I also got a little bit unlucky with uh, when I was rolling. See the loaf, though. The loaf tipped the Voron AE, because it's a goddamn horse with a vehicle. I went for the rescue. <laughs> Fancy in my chat, I was like, sod it. I'll leave the winch on then, we'll see what happens. See? Goddamn professional mode. And again, it's a muscly little horse. See? It's like, the amount of time that saves me, just from having one dragging along behind me that is of no trouble whatsoever, but is seriously fucking useful <laughs> every five minutes. See? He's even loaded himself onto the Warren here. We're ready to go. Ready to go metal detecting. Looks like he's just been eating ass for the last 10 minutes. A goddamn horse of a vehicle. Perverted horse of a vehicle. So we're in the quarry now. Uh, yeah, I've gone for a two slot trailer this time. Seemed like the safer option. I really, yeah, I just don't like the four slot really. I don't like the bloody <laughs> scout trailers. Definitely glad this thing has a truck trailers over scout trailers. I'd honestly rather them little scout cargo trailers. I'd rather just pop the wheels and axle off and have it as a, just a sled. It'd be so much easier. Like Those trailers just aren't designed really well for this game. I mean, yeah, as you can see, this thing's no super truck. It's still more to do with weight, I think. I mean, maybe if it did have a uh, saddle low on it, and you could put a semi-trailer on, that would obviously add some of the weight to the rear axle. It might improve the situation, I'm not too sure, but... Just could try popping a loaf on there as well. It's usually a good idea. That never goes wrong. See, in certain situations, like, I love flying down there. And at that point, this feels too slow. But then there's times like this where it just ticks along at a yeah, relatively nice pace. To where I can't really complain because a lot of trucks go pretty slow through here. Even some of the decent trucks. I think that was a glitch, yeah. I didn't edit that. But. So yeah, grabbed one slab. And uh, it looked like it was going alright for a, a few seconds. And then when I looked around, we're wedged. Yeah, there's a rock there, so... Rather than mess around trying to reverse. Again, send in the goddamn horse. It's even through this muddy bit. The loaf's still ticking along at a reasonable pace. It'll do, especially for all the uh, yeah stuff it gets away. I forgot I even le I left another horse on it. I've got vehicles all over the map at the minute. I used to recover them quite a lot, and for some reason, I think it's since Amandra. Amandra just makes you leave trucks everywhere because you go to hit recover and it's like, well, if I recover it, I'm going to have to possibly potentially get that back to that place at some point. So I might just be best off leaving it just in case, because I can always recover it later, but I can't unrecover it. <laughs> so I've got, yeah, five or six loafs dotted around Amandra. I think oh, I've got Navistar on there. 
I don't know, I've got five or six other vehicles and then some loafs. I think I've got more vehicles than trailers scattered around on Imandra at the minute. Nothing wrong with a strategic loaf. Uh, I mean, yeah, you see, loaf pulled me uh, straight out of that mud and we're off. Another loaf already waiting there as a mobile winch, or a winch point, should I say. And yeah, I believe this did a little bit better than last time. I'm sure it didn't quite get to the top of the hill too easily the first time. So the extra power and what feels like a slightly higher rev range now is, uh, yeah, helping. I mean, look at that. I forgot, again, to take it out of bloody reverse. Got it all set up and absolutely just <laughs> floored it in reverse. <laughs> Reminds me of a, my brother was telling me years ago. My brother Dave, of course, got a, a Honda Legend. Most people probably wouldn't have heard of one of them, but... It was some, I don't know, like 3 litre V6 thing. Uh, yeah, it had an auto gearbox in it though. And I think it was Adam who was telling me, but it was Dave who was driving. He was, as usual, messing around. He floored it down the road, but obviously he forgot he was in an auto. <laughs> so he slammed on the brake thinking it was the clutch. And uh, yeah, Ad said they all nearly, or basically did, headbutt the dashboard. Ready to go into second gear and they, uh, yeah, ended up doing an emergency braking. Anyway, sent the loaf back up. See, it rolled down the hill, but got back to its wheels because it's professional. Went to the top of the hill, winched this thing up the hill. Rather than pulling the loaf down, which, uh, yeah. I mean, even the Derry Longhorn 4520, the only time I ever managed to drive that thing up even one hill on that quarry was when I winched it to a loaf. Every other time, it was just a disaster. Oh my god, I'm having flashbacks of that Derry Longhorn section in the quarry. That was brutal how terrible it was like I'd rather be given I don't know a wheelchair and wishful thinking to get up there because the Derry Longhorn don't do nothing I mean it's a shame because it they, I was saying to someone the other day they need to put more like the twin steer engine in the uh, Derry Longhorn 4520 I think it's some, somebody or a few people have said it's got the Royal engine in I believe which is ridiculous because the Royal like it's a much smaller, lighter truck compared to the Derry. Yeah, I could only get so far up here. Again, it's more that it just runs out of, I would say, grip over power. It just isn't planted enough in the ground to uh, claw its way up that hill. But, of course, sending the loaf, sat in its little loaf hole, and yeah, winch this thing up, no problem. I've basically got the rear tyre hooked on that rock, which happens to most trucks here. That's what I tend to have found. The best way is just to winch one of them trees and, yeah, scoot the wheel over. It's one of the worst places to put a rock jutting out. Like, it's already hard enough to get up that hill game. <laughs> Someone is definitely a troll who works on this game because, yeah, they really do like putting, putting it in the awkward places. <laughs> That's what she said. I've just sent it down there. I thought it might tip off to the right then, but no. Nope. Although the cargo did unpack. I don't think there is a flatbed option though, is there a, of a two slot trailer? There is that other trailer that's a two slot with those po I don't know if anyone else uses that other trailer much. I think it's got four axles on it possibly. But those posts that stick up the side, when you're trying to load cargo on it with a crane, they just get in the way so much that I always use that trailer if I'm going to use a two slot trailer. You see? Life's got no shits to give. Time is life. It looks like he's tipped, but he's just playing. Job's a good one, and we're off. Covered in shit again. Just ran a mushroom over them. Not seen many of them on this game. I think it was on Mud Runner. You had to run a certain amount of mushrooms over. <laughs> you see? Just go gunning down the hill in the loaf. He's a goddamn professional. He's ready. And we're off. As for the ice, I mean, it's got a bit more power to claw its way back out before you sink in. So I would say it's a little bit better in that sense. 
I learned that quite early on with the eyes, that say if I've got the option of the three low range. Um, yeah, you don't want to go too fast across the eyes, but at the same time, you can kind of go too slow. Like, if you give the eyes long enough to snap and move out the way before you, you've moved on to the next chunk of ice, then... Yeah, it can be worse, really. I'd say to a degree, you possibly can't go too fast over the ice. But if you start approaching on a bit of an angle, you can uh, catch yourself up and smash your suspension and tyres pretty easily. I already smashed my suspension on the way here. But I was just curious to see, like... As I've said before, because it lowers the chassis down as well, it's almost like... The only way I can think of it in my head is, like, because the tyres don't protrude downwards as much, like, relative to the chassis. Like, when you sat nice and tall on your suspension, yeah, there's a lot of different, uh, like, distance between the bottom of your tyre and the bottom of your chassis. But once you've got collapsed suspension, it's all like it merges into... I don't know, it just doesn't seem to punch the wheels through as far or as quickly in the ice. And you've got time to still, like, ride along the top of it rather than, yeah, smashing through it. It's a small, subtle difference, but it does make a difference. And yeah, Loaf's having a good time. But it's nice, though. It does fit on this flat bed thing. All you got to do as well is... Uh, well, I've got the crane on them because these vehicles have now got this centre winch point. What do people think to those centre winch points? I'd say it's good. I, I have to admit, like, I like the option there. But I still wish you could just scroll through the winch points when you're using the crane. I got so used to just flicking a loaf into a sideboard with a crane from the front that I almost keep forgetting now. Like, it takes me longer to load a loaf <laughs> just because, yeah, I'm just used to it. But then it quite often, it's not too much of a bad thing, but it offers you the uh, roof winch point pretty easily now before it does the bumper one. So it just tends to be the one I'm, I grab and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got to load it, like, centrally now. I was just curious when I was like bringing this set up is uh, what difference having the crane on the flatbed and a loaf. And to a degree, I think it does feel like it does plant it more in the ground a bit. Like all going through that boggy bit, I think I would have been wading and going a bit slower if I just had the uh, normal setup. But especially the loaf hanging over the back. I mean the loaf does weigh, I wouldn't say it weighs a lot overall but scouts in this game, the fact that they can push the limits of the cranes, whereas cargo rarely does, so yeah, the uh, the, bit, the the scouts are definitely on a heavier scale than like the flatbed and the crane, I reckon. It's pretty cool that this thing can have a crane, though. And yeah, I was just going across the cliff. There was a tiny little glitch here, I believe, yeah, there, which I apologise for, but I've all, I also tried the other cliff on a mandra, so I won't worry about it too much. But that's what I mean, when you're just chilling and scouting and floating around like you're not in a mad crazy rush. This is just a nice truck to sort of experience the terrain and everything. Ta-da! Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it feels quite realistic in this game most of the time. There is the odd thing, as I said. Overall top end speed would be uh, nice if there was an increase, but yeah, it just feels like it's quite a nicely balanced truck between what it can do, what it can't do, and how it reacts on the terrain a lot, or most of it. So I'm wheeling at the minute, it's floating from the front. And I was taking quite a bit of damage there before, but eventually I got the light. The nose sits high enough that the snorkel was just about peeking out the air water and I stopped taking any more damage. And that's it really, I mean, it's not the most amazing through the water or anything. It can certainly it will get you through pretty much every river on this game. I. I um, assume, slash hoping at some point, one of the next maps they add, I don't know if it'll be the next one, but I'm hoping water obstacles will become a bit more of a thing, because they've got snorkels in this game, but a lot of trucks don't really ever need them necessarily. They might come in handy every now and then, but yeah, most time I need a snorkel is when I go flying off that cliff into the sea, but that's not really part of the, uh, part of the mission. 
overall though it's definitely worth getting i think most people quite like this truck anyway so i think most people kept it but yeah it's well worth getting the engine and yeah there's just something nice about like the characteristics and handling of this truck it's just definitely worth getting it's hard to sort of put your finger on it as such because there is objectively better trucks and stuff in the game than this but there's just when you put the whole package together it's just yeah the way it handles and uh the way it ticks along along terrain does feel pretty realistic um yeah it's about 95 grand just a shade under 100 grand by the time i've uh, got it but yeah it's well worth it like say rob a bank if you have to yeah <laughs> i robbed a bank I'll run in there be like right stickers this is a fuck up yeah <laughs> start panic run out like jesus christ i think i have to learn my lines well, there's a brief time as a bank robber but we learned some things see that's why you get yourself a loaf send him in he'll know what to do he'll be like money bag now fire off a shot into the roof we'll be out there in 30 seconds um yeah what's this 54 grand stock so yeah it's not too bad i mean compared to some trucks what's the bloody dairy longhorn it's like 140 grand stock that's a quick way to lose some cash in this game but yeah 100 grand overall i mean i can't complain with that it's pretty cheap for how much fun and that this is once I get like trucks that I like, I don't really care how much they cost anyway. If the Derry was awesome, I'd happily pay 200 odd grand for it. And fingers crossed they do a... Uh, but basically like they did with this, they've... I think it was already planned, but the point is it's got an upgraded engine and it, uh, yeah, improves the... improves the situation overall. So it's just the last couple of bits from when I was messing around earlier. Came back to cut over there, I sort of dived over the left hand... Uh, the right hand side of the first plank just because yeah they can catch on you but this was uh, attempting the longer crazier cliff on Imandra and at this point I just squeezed the throttle flat out like I certainly wouldn't recommend <laughs> driving like it I didn't realize quite how much it uh, smashed me around in the first 10 seconds well I think I think I got a little bit unlucky with the first hit and that deleted the, su the suspension which probably wasn't full health by the time I got here. But that's just one of the nice things about this truck. I mean, I suppose right now I've not got a loaf towing behind me because I've basically got all the roof racks and stuff on the thing anyway. Oh uh, yeah, for my own curiosity, I mean, I've never fell off this cliff yet. I've only been over here four or five times, but... Yeah. I mean, I like to try and take the piss. If I was just going to crawl along at one mile an hour across there, I'd probably never fall off, so... I like to, uh, yeah, make it a bit risky. I was thinking now, though, like, oh no. Don't do it to me, truck. See what I mean with the engine, though? Even when I repaired the thing at the uh, beginning of that cliff, still pretty beat up by the end of it. Now even taking gearbox damage, that's when you can tell it's usually pretty low on the engine health. That's about it though, it's a pretty nice uh, looking view I think. Amandra's definitely a good looking map, it's uh, a punish but it's uh, nice, nice views. So yeah, that's about it for today though, speaking of Amandra I'll probably do that aeroplane mission tomorrow. But yeah, that's about it for today though, hope you've enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.